so let's move on to the next station. Walid will be the examinee. So Walid, uh, this lady is one of the new referrals on your um, hip clinic list for today. She's been referred by your GP. Uh, she is a 50 year old uh, lady with known rheumatoid arthritis with a bilateral hip pain, more on the uh, right side. Um, she is taking a prednisolone 30 milligrams for her rheumatoid as well as infleximab. Uh, how would you proceed to, uh, to examine this lady and manage her? So I will start by taking a, uh, a proper history uh, uh, from her regarding her uh, comorbidities, um, the site of pain, radiation of pain, and its effect on her daily activities and on life. I want to talk about her expectations and what she wants out of this visit. Then I'm going to go dig deeper into her rheumatoid and if it is well controlled, the history of the medications, how long she's been on the current medications. Um, I'd also want to ask her about other joints that might be involved with rheumatoid, her hands, her knees, her uh, ankles, as they might affect her rehabilitation. Uh, and uh, want to ask her if she has any problems, particularly with her um, neck. Uh, then I want to go on to a focused examination, range of motion of her hip, um, um, look, uh, make sure there's no flexion deformity. When I look at her leg length discrepancy and uh, neurovascular uh, status, um, and um, so more with with all that lady. Uh, sorry, the only comorbidity she has. As the only comorbidity she has is rheumatoid arthritis, um, no other joints are affected significantly. She's exhausted her conservative uh, measures with the hip uh, arthritis and she wants to know uh, what would you offer her? So um, if she's exhausted all uh, non-operative measures, then um, we will, um, with this degree of arthritis, I would offer a hip replacement, but prior to doing so, I would consult a rheumatologist regarding when the best time of treatment is um, uh, and um, what to do with her medications, uh, the prednisolone and the biological medications that she's on. Uh, I'd also uh, want to uh, get her an anesthetic review. Um, I could add her to the waiting list, but I would still ask for an anesthetic review prior to uh, the surgery. Uh, and I would examine her neck. And if I do have any problems, I'll get dynamic uh, views of her neck uh, to exclude any problems in the uh, Atlanta. Uh, uh. Do, do you know uh, generally how how long before the surgery we need to stop the particular treatment she's on? So she's on prednisolone 30 milligrams and infliximab, one of the biologic treatments. Do you have roughly when that needs to be stopped? So I will definitely pass this by her rheumatologist, but generally speaking, the guidelines from the American uh, College of Rheumatology is that uh, you would taper prednisolone, and if possible, and try to get it below 20 uh, milligrams per day. She's on 30, so she's not got lo uh, a long way uh, to go. Uh, the biologics should be stopped uh, one uh, cycling dose prior. So it depends, each biologic has a different cycling dose, whether it's a week or two or three. I'm not sure with that particular one what it is, but um, uh, we'll consult with the rheumatologist who want to stop it. So this lady has been told that she, because of her rheumatoid arthritis, she's uh, particularly at a higher risk than her peers when it comes to the hip replacement. What, how would you respond to that? Yes, yeah, so unfortunately with rheumatoid arthritis and particularly with someone on biologics and on prednisolone, she's definitely at a higher risk of infection. And that will be uh, my main concern. But she's also at a higher uh, risk of a fracture because of her rheumatoid, a periprosthetic fracture, whether intraoperative or postoperative. And she's at a, a, a higher risk of a dislocation. How would you minimize the risks of infection? So um, I would use my standard uh, protocol, which we use for uh, all my hips, which would include preoperative optimization of the patient, uh, same day admission, um, excluding any septic focus uh, available. Perioperatively, we use uh, per, um, uh, antibiotics as per hospital guidelines. I'd use uh, antibiotic integrated cement, do this in a uh, theater with laminar flow, 
minimize number of personnel in theaters, um, uh, double gloves and change gloves every uh, couple of hours, uh, sorry, every hour. And um, um, uh, so I think one of the important things is tissue handling uh, during the procedure and minimize the time of surgery if possible. Yep, time's up. So what do you think? What do you think I did? Uh, I think you did really well. Uh, you seem to be aware of the rheumatoid arthritis and uh, what are the potential complications that this particular type of patients are prone to. Um, you you, um, you quite um, uh, sensibly uh, asked for the rheumatology advice, but you seem to know the general guidance when it comes to uh, stopping the medications before uh, elective um, surgeries. Uh, your answer was, um, when it came to the infection, your answer was actually quite good. You, um, you classified the, uh, the measures to stop the infection as preoperative uh, and perioperative. Uh, I would have wanted you to elaborate more on, um, uh, or maybe give uh, an example of uh, a multi-center trial on how to uh, minimize the, all the effects which actually count most when it comes to minimizing the risks of infection. Yeah, I, I wanted to get to that trial, but unfortunately the time didn't. Uh, so I, I don't know if I should have sort of put it in there, uh, but I think you're, you're sort of referring to the MRC uh, trial, the uh, Medical Research Council trial, which was done in the 80s and looked at the various uh, um, effect of each of these uh, uh, factors on infection and antibiotic cement was, was the highest followed by um, a preoperative uh, antibiotic. Uh, so I, I would have also wanted to reach it, but uh, uh, time didn't help. Yep. So on reflecting on Walid's answer of uh, when uh, to stop the part every particular um, drug, uh, I think this paper is actually very useful. It's published in 2017 and it's the recommendation by the American College of Rheumatology. In a nutshell, uh, they would recommend that you carry on uh, taking the methotrexate throughout. There's no uh, increased risk of infection with continuing the methotrexate. When it comes to the biologic treatment, uh, like the inflict Ximab and the rest of the family, they recommend stopping uh, one cycle before the um, one cycle of treatment before the uh, before the operative um, date. For the prednisolone, it has to be titrated, and they found that there is um, a significant increase in the risk of infection if the patient is on a higher dose than 20 milligrams. So, if the patient is on a higher dose, it needs to be titrated to less than um, 20 uh, milligrams. So I think it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, paper uh, that you need to be aware of because rheumatoid is um, it's one of the uh, common diseases which you get across in the hands and the hips and the knees. So this is actually uh, very useful. When it comes to the uh, infection, um, well, it didn't, didn't have much time to elaborate on one of the uh, famous um, trials, the MRC um, uh, trial. Um, it's trials done in the 80s and they looked into different factors and uh, how much effect does that particular factor have on reducing the risk of infection. And as you can see on the screen, uh, the antibiotic loaded cement uh, was the most important factor followed by the systemic antibiotics, followed by the ultra clean air like the laminar flow. And then the plastic isolators and the body um, exhaust uh, suit. Again, this is a very, very well-known um, trial, uh, which you have to familiarize yourself with. And I, 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 in my exam, I, I did mention this trial. Um, it's, it's so well-known that the examiners aren't, weren't really impressed because <laughs> I think you, you, you get asked if you don't mention it rather than asked if you, rather than get a bonus point if you mention it. So, yeah. Okay.